G'day everyone, my name's Matt and welcome back to the second in a series of videos talking all about fire and fire behaviour. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about pyrolysis, which is a fundamental part of understanding um, fire behaviour and how fire works. Now the word itself, pyrolysis, is derived from the Greek language where pyro, which means fire, is joined with lysis, which means to separate or to break down. And you join them together and you basically get a word that means uh, fire breaking things down, which is essentially what's going on in the pyrolysis process. Now, in the previous episode, we talked about how when a fire is burning, it's not the solid fuels which are actually burning, but it's the flammable gases that are emitted from those fuels which allows our fire to burn. So the question is, is how do we get our solid fuels and turn them into a gas? For instance, if I were to take this piece of plywood here, which is a solid fuel, how do I turn that into a gas? And the answer is really quite simple. I just add some heat. And by adding heat, what I do is I start to break down all the building blocks that actually hold this piece of, uh, uh, this piece of plywood together. And so all the pieces of carbon and hydrogen and everything else that makes up this piece of timber all start to break apart from each other. And as they start to break apart from each other, they start to be able to float away. And as they start to float away, they can be seen as a flammable gas. Now, this gas can come in a number of different colours, but they are fairly consistent. Um, and those colours are our whites, our greys, our greens, our browns, those kinds of dirty coloured smoke. I'll put this board down. Um, now, our black smoke, however, comes from a different place altogether. Our black smoke is what's called incomplete combustion. And that actually comes from uh, the, uh, the exhaust material that isn't used when the flame is actually present, which is different to pyrolysis gases, because pyrolysis gases don't actually need a flame to occur. They don't actually require oxygen to be present for the process to, uh, to, for the process to happen. All you need for pyrolysis gases to begin is simply heat and fuel. And if you have heat and fuel together, you can get pyrolysis gases. You can get these flammable and toxic gases coming out. Now, what we're gonna do now is bring up a few different examples of pyrolysis gases and where we might expect to see them on the fire ground. Okay, so for our first example, we're gonna be using some chipboard. Now this is a really good example of modern building materials where you'd expect to find this in a floor of a modern home or something like that. Now, as soon as I apply the flame to the chipboard, you see that these lighter colored gases are starting to be emitted. And these are our pyrolysis gases. And you'll see that as soon as I reapply the flame to the chipboard, these gases go away again. And that's because they're being consumed by the flame. And in this particular case, the fire is actually burning cleanly, so we're not getting any black smoke or incomplete combustion emitted. For our second example, we're going to burn some plastic. And this is essentially a whole heap of hydrocarbons linked together. Now, the result of this is when we burn it, we get a lot of incomplete combustion, so we see a lot of black smoke coming out of the end of the flame. However, as soon as we put the flame out, we return to our lighter coloured pyrolysis gases, and this really emphasises the difference between pyrolysis and incomplete combustion. And for a third example, we're gonna burn some styrofoam. Now this is very similar to the plastic in that when it burns, it burns with a very thick black smoke. However, just like the plastic, as soon as I put the flames out, we return to our lighter coloured pyrolysis gases. So this really clearly demonstrates that the presence of flame is the determining factor whether we get incomplete combustion, which is our black smoke, or whether we get pyrolysis gases. Now, the two aren't mutually exclusive. Um, in fires, we normally see a lot of pyrolysis gases with a lot of incomplete combustion, but the two can be read separately and start to give us a lot of uh, very important factors towards our fire. All right, so now that we've seen that our pyrolysis gases are actually fairly consistent colours, and that it's actually the stage of fire, whether there is actually flame present or not, which dictates whether or not we've got our pyrolysis gases, which are our lighter colours of smoke, or we have incomplete combustion, which is our black smoke. Uh, remembering that fires can still burn cleanly as well, so there may not be any black smoke being, um, being created. 
And by knowing this, we can really start to read our fire and figure out what's actually going on inside of a structure fire before we even enter it. And by doing so, we can start to figure out what our tactics are going to do as far as uh, our suppressing that fire or making it, making it worse. This is also really important when we start talking about ventilation controlled fires and other fires such as uh, backdraft and those kinds of things, which we'll cover in a, uh, in a later episode. But for now, we really just wanna be talking about our pyrolysis gases, which to recap are our whites, our greys, our greens, our browns, those kinds of colors of smoke. Um, and we gain them from adding heat and fuel. And by having those two elements, we can create um, pyrolysis gases. Remembering again that they don't require any oxygen for this to occur, so this can happen in a very, very ventilation controlled state. So um, it's a very important note to be thinking about if we've got very heavy pyrolysis gases, we've obviously got a lot of heat and fuel, but we might not have the oxygen that's required for our fires to burn. Uh, that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching and uh, we'll see you in the uh, next video. Cheers.